Hello, good afternoon. This is my greatest honor to be invited to give my talk today at IS 2021. My topic today is sexualized drug use and HIV infection. This is my disclosure. Drug and sex are two biggest taboos in many cultures and societies, which also give us a great deal of pleasure. We were about to sing with these exciting yet um, perhaps dangerous duet. I would just like to remind everyone that recreational drug use with or without sex is actually nothing new. I just saw this um, documentary on YouTube the other day, realizing that dolphins play with pufferfish purposefully in order to get high from uh, the deadly neurotoxin they excreted. Also, nutmeg can not only make your food more tasty, but can spice up your sex life as well. So if you are adding a bit more nutmeg to your eggnog after our talk today, don't feel guilty. It's probably just human nature. So let's start with sexualized drug use in the general population. Not surprisingly, many studies have shown that substance-linked sex occurs across all genders and all sexual orientations. From the annual survey for regular ecstasy or MDMA users in Australia, the researchers found that both heterosexual and LGBT users had similar rates of casual and unprotected sex while under the influence of drugs. In the 2013 Global Drug Survey, regardless of genders or sexual orientations, alcohol is the number one drug used to have sex on, followed by cannabis and MDMA. At least 20% of each group reported to use drugs with intention to enhance sexual experience. On your right upper side of the slide, you will see these small sachets inside the pre-mixed ketanone, ketamine, MDMA, and BZD, and were used almost exclusively by heterosexual clients during sex in Taiwan. Dr. Mills and her colleagues have compared the recreational drug use among HIV negative and HIV positive individuals attending sexual health and HIV clinics from two large cross-sectional studies in England, ORA and ESTRA respectively. There are four groups, HIV negative heterosexual men, HIV positive heterosexual men, HIV negative women, and HIV positive women. In all four groups, cannabis was the most commonly used drug followed by cocaine, and recreational drug were use was associated with condolence sex, depression, and anxiety in all groups. Now we will focus on an emerging form of sexualized drug use among gay and bisexual men who have sex with men, or chemsex. Chemsex, literally using chemicals while having sex, was used to describe uh, specifically the sex between men that occurs under the influence of drugs taken immediately preceding or during the sexual session to facilitate or enhance the sexual experience. It has been called party and play, chemfang, haifang, icefang, and other names on the social dating apps colloquially. Different from the drug used in heterosexual individuals, substances commonly used during chemsex are crystal methamphetamine or ice, GHB, GBL or G water, mephedrol in some countries, nitrites or poppers, and erectile dysfunction agents such as sildenafil. Most chemsex studies uh, are from North America, the UK, and the Europe. Dr. Maxwell and his colleagues have performed a systemic review of the literature published between 2000 and 2018. Um, using an ABC or antecedent uh, behavior um, consequence framework, they were able to draw a more clear picture of different variables during chemsex. For a total of 38 uh, studies, including the review, uh, the overall prevalence for chemsex ranging from 3 to 29 percent. Some uh, studies suggest that mephedrone was the most commonly used drug, and while others suggest GHB, GBL is the most commonly used drug, depending on uh, geographical locations. Uh, the prevalence of methamphetamine use range from 3 to 22 percent. Regarding the prevalence of injection drugs, it ranged from 1 to 50 percent. It appears that meth methamphetamine is the most commonly injected drug.
Several studies found that HIV positive MSN were more likely to have can sex and more likely to engage in high risk behaviors, while HIV negative MSN were similarly at a high risk of HIV and STI transmission when drugs were combined with sex. Um, compared to the Western countries, there are less data regarding the prevalence of chemsex in the Asia Pacific region, depending on the definition used and the specific population assessed by the questionnaires. The prevalence among GBMSM in our region varies. In Thailand, around 80%, Vietnam, 40%, Singapore and Taiwan, 9%, Malaysia, 7%, and Japan, 4%. One study from Australia showed 40% uh, used crystal methamphetamine in the past six months, and around 5% did slamming or intravenous um, injection of crystal meth. Some studies specifically describe prevalence of chemsex among GBSM living with HIV. Uh, the prevalence was around 30% in both Taiwan and Australia. Um, among all the drugs used to chemsex, crystal methamphetamine is probably the one associated with greater risk. We will talk about it separately. Methamphetamine is a potent stimulant. It causes uh, dopamine release from the nerve endings. The areas of brain responsible for meth liking or craving are known, but probably include the striatum and the regions sending input to the striatum. Uh, normally, dopamine was released into the synapse and taken back into the nerve ending by the dopamine transporter, and then transported into the synaptical uh, vesicles by the vesicular monoamine transporter 2, as shown in the picture. Um, methamphetamine can inhibit both kinds of transporters, cause a surge of striatal dopamine releasing from the nerve ending into um, the synapse. Methamphetamine can also cause the release of norepinephrine in the central and the peripheral nerve systems, therefore keep the brain alert and activate the cardiovascular system. Methamphetamine can be taken orally, snorted, smoked, or injected intravenously, or slamming. Um, the onset was quick is with smoking and slamming, taking just a couple of minutes. People binge using crystal meth will go through different stages. Rush of flash is an initial response, coming along with euphoria and increased body temperature and heart rate. And then rush is followed by a high. The user can be talkative, feeling overconfident and adventurous, and intensely focus on certain activities such as uh, having sex repeatedly for hours. Um, the users may try to maintain the high by binge smoking or injecting more drugs for some more days until there's no rush or high. Then the users enter the stage called tweaking. When uh, the user were deprived of sleep, um, being irritable and paranoid, feeling emptiness and craving, they can be hostile and dangerous to themselves and to others as well. And then the users crash, become uh, lifeless and sleepy. After several days, the users may feel depressed and lethargic until the craving kicks in again, which can occur as delayed as three months from the time of last dose. There are clearly several harms associated with methamphetamine use. Astra study from the UK mentioned above uh, showed uh, compared to other recreational drug um, crystal meth is associated more strongly with riskier and colorless sex. If used overdose, intoxication with symptoms like hallucination, hypothermia, or arrhythmia can occur and even threaten lives. The long-term use of methamphetamine will change brain structures and functions, causing addiction, psychosis, decreased attention, mood swings, and weight change. Slamming may cause extra uh, harm such as local injection site injuries and infections such as endocarditis. Sharing needles will increase the risk of blood-borne infections such as hepatitis C. Our colleagues Dr. Jia Wen also found that slamming is associated with an increased risk of crystal mass dependence. Do we have effective interventions on crystal methamphetamine and other sexualized drug use? 
what are the evidence? So far, the intervention with the highest level of evidence for methamphetamine addiction is cognitive behavior therapy, such as the matrix model. It was first developed in the 1980s and proved to increase the uh, interval with the participants staying in treatment and abstinent. It is a highly structured 16 week treatment comprised of many different uh, kinds of therapies and drug testing. Uh, my psychiatrist colleagues always compare themselves to personal trainers in the gym, only that they work on the client's mindset of their bodies. Um, there will be intensive courses um, teaching the users different skills like early recovery skills and skills to re uh, prevent relapse, uh, such as the thought stopping techniques shown in the pictures. Other incentive-based um, interventions such as contingency management and meter have also been shown um, to be effective alone um, among uh, methamphetamine users. Like hearing, so far there's no replacement therapy available for methamphetamine. Not until recently, where some pharmacological um, interventions proved to be effective to treat methamphetamine use disorders, in addition to standard con uh, counseling. One of them is mirtazapine, an antidepressant with mixed uh, noradrenergic, uh, serotonergic, and dopaminergic effects. In this double-blind and randomized control trial conducted among cisgender men, transgender men, and women who have sex with men, compared to placebo, mirtazapine results in reductions in positive uh, urine taste results at 12, 24, and 36 weeks, as shown in the figure on the right upper side, and also uh, result in fewer sexual risk behaviors. Another double-blind randomized control trial is combining long-acting naltrexone injection uh, and opioid antagonist given uh, every three weeks with daily oral bupropion and a typical antidepressant. Uh, participants with moderate to severe methamphetamine use disorders were enrolled and received the combination or placebo for six weeks. The primary outcome is a response defined as three out of four urine test results negative. Although um, the overall response in both groups were low, the participants receiving naltrexone plus bupropion had higher response rate uh, over 12 weeks, as shown in the figure on the right lower side. Some organizations like Mainline from the Netherlands and uh, Lighthouse from uh, Vietnam focus on harm reduction strategies. People should be tested regularly with an HIV combo test to pick up acute HIV infection as early as possible. If tested positive, early initiation of HIV treatment and choose the ART regimen, which can suppress the viral load rapidly with greater genetic barrier and least drug drug interactions would be ideal. For people testing negative, they should be offered individualized protection options such as condoms, PEP, or PrEP. In one study from Australia, it is shown that um, GBMSM in intensive uh, sex partying network um, are increasingly adding PrEP along with other drugs. Um, screening other STIs is also important, especially those treatable and preventable with vaccinations. Clean needle exchange uh, is crucial for slammers. Although we might have a long established needle exchange program for hearing users, it may not be culturally um, attractive, accepted, or even utilized by crystal mass slammers. Most clients with sexualized drug use do not go to traditional uh, drug services or mental health clinics. They usually appear in the clinics for uh, HIV or STIs. Our COVID study in Taiwan also found that chemsex clients prefer LGBT-related or HIV-related organizations to traditional rehab centers. Therefore, it's important that we screen and help our clients in a setting with integrated sexual health services. One, one of the world-leading models is 56 Street, uh, based in London. David Stewart and uh, 56 Street create, created a friendly space for all people using CAMS to talk about their conditions and have 
other services in the same building. Um, following this model, Hero Center was established in Kaohsiung, Taiwan in 2016. Um, it provided similar integrated uh, services for the local communities. And KBCC, a public ICI clinic where I've been working, also had a psychiatrist and hepatologist clinic on the same floor, providing chemsex uh, counseling and HCV treatment on the same day. Sometimes clinicians don't know how to screen their clients when chemsex issue or they are shy or even shocked when people disclose their uh, conditions. Here are some tips. Uh, we suggest to use the right affirmative questions with non-judging attitude. Uh, we can ask uh, our clients, have you been using any drugs like crystal meth, GHB, GBR, MDMA, or ketamine? Um, try to avoid words like uh, illegal or abuse. While we might want to know more details about the drug use, it's also important to talk about the sexual relationship and the partnership uh, with our clients um, behind the drug use. Um, because sex and drugs can be taboos in, in some countries, health professionals need to assure the clients that the talk will be private and confidential and only stays in the clinic. And finally, as David Stewart always say, don't forget your supportive smile. With a thorough yet stressing, not stressing history taking, uh, we might categorize our clients into three different stages of sexualized drug use. Each stage has its own goal. For example, if the client just starting to use drugs or at the entry stage, the intervention should be directed to prevent further use and provide harm reduction services. If the client have, is having chemsex on a frequent regular basis, um, apart from harm reduction, we should screen the patients um, and see if they want to make a change. Don't be discouraged if our clients turn down our offer initially. Each visit gives us a brief and unique chance to increase their motivation until they finally decide to be referred to the specialist for help. Finally, we will talk about the gap in research, clinical practice, and advocacy. Apart from some issues we have mentioned in the talk previously, there are still a lot we can do now and immediately. We need constant financial support from the system to keep sexual and mental health services running. We need to um, build international and multidisciplinary networks for collaborations and advocacy. We need to talk about sexualized drug use openly, non judgingly with the communities as well as with the general population so that we can bring down and the stigma coming inside and outside. Finally, we should advocate together for changing drug and anti-LGBT laws and policies, which are against human rights and kill people. In conclusion, sexualized drug use occurs uh, across sexual orientations and genders, although there is a difference uh, in substance preferences. Chemsex, especially uh, with the use of crystal methamphetamine, has emerged in a subgroup of GBMSM globally and impacts its sexual and mental health of this population. Culturally sensitive and evidence-based interventions integrated with HIV preventive strategy should be developed and implemented promptly. I'd like to thank the communities who have always trusted us, inspired us, and supported our studies. I also like to thank Dr. Su and um, the Department of Public Health in Taoyuan for supporting Asia Pacific Chemsex Symposium for the past two years. Uh, my amazing staff, Xiao Zhu, Huang Di, and Oscar. Uh, many thanks to Dr. Jia Wen, Carol, Hao Yi, Poya, Alex, and Adam for your support and inspirations. My gratitude to thank uh, Dr. Isaac and Dr. Free for the inputs while preparing this talk. And finally, I'd like to thank my mentor, Dr. Wong, who passed away and taught us how warm-hearted a physician can be to his patients and how unconditional a teacher can be to his students. Thank you very much.